Is Sean Strickland going straight back to the apex or is he too big of a superstar? Before we get into that, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe as we have brand new videos every single week. So, Mark, let's talk a little bit about UFC 297 and the actual fight itself. Duplessis defeated Sean Strickland to become the new middleweight champion of the world. What did you think of the fight? And did you think it was a robbery? It was an incredibly close fight. Uh, I'm always dubious about calling something a robbery because when something's that razor close, that's when favoritism comes in. And whoever is your, your fans are rooting for are just going to say that they were robbed if it didn't go their way. It's just, it's UFC classic. It's been like this forever. Whatever happened, if Sean Strickland was robbed, it doesn't matter anyway. He's like a that won't flush. He's going to be back in the octagon next week anyway, proving that he is a main event contender. Yeah, definitely. I think with Sean Strickland, he is going to be back so often as because he loves to fight as often as possible. So I don't think it'll be long till we see him back. Um, the fight for me was quite an interesting one in the sense of it was fun to watch, but it seemed so sloppy, didn't it? It, it, it feels like Duplessis is somewhat so untechnical, <laughs> but yet he gets the job done. He, he seems so awkward and weird and he's throwing punches out of range, but they're landing and he's doing well. Um, And on sort of the discussion of a robbery, there's even been talks that this match was actually fixed. And I think that's just completely silly. You know, get over it. Your new favourite fighter lost, but don't worry, he'll be back in the apex next week. Duplessis, you won fair and square. Just get over it. It is what it is, right? It just, it gets silly when people start talking about fights like this, isn't it, you know? When a, when a fight's that close and people say that it was a fix, oh, it was all set up, you think, just how good of an actor do you think both of these guys are to work in sync in front of a live crowd, taped live for millions of people? You mm. think, you think that they can get it that razor close? A knockout, maybe, you could probably argue that, yeah, someone took a dive, but nah, yeah. it just doesn't work. And we'll, for, for Duplessis, Dwayne, we'll, we'll call him unconventional. <laughs> Not, we'll, we'll, sloppy. we'll call him unconventional because it does work, though. You're right in what you're saying, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's a fair point, fair point. But now, with Sean Strickland, where do you think that's going to put him in the rankings? And do you think we'll ever see him fight for a title again? I think I think we could do definitely. He's only thirty two. I actually had a think about this today, and I believe that the fight to make is him and Jared Cannonier too. Because I don't has Jared fought since the last Sean fight. I'm not really sure. I don't think I don't think he has. How razor close that was! If Sean can get through Jared, because Jared's still a top contender, you know, and then he cements himself there. Plus, everyone else is booked up. Mm. I'd actually like for him to run this fight back again. Duplessis and Strickland, but I don't think they're going to do that. I think they've got to make way for a certain Kiwi who dominated the middleweight division for about four years. <laughs> well, we'll get onto that in a little bit. Don't get too excited about talking about Whitaker. Yeah, calm down, Matt. Calm down. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> so, right. We also, with Sean Strickland, though, I've always kind of seen him as this apex fighter, this high-level apex fighter. But he's headlined two pay-per-views now. Do you think he'll head back to the apex, or do you think he's too big of a star now um, for fight nights like that? I think he's broke the mould now. I think, because let's not forget the the UFC event in Sydney, where it was Adesanya versus Strickland. People were thinking that he's just, Adesanya's just going to run through him. They were thinking, why is he even training so hard for Sean Strickland? Strickland dominated him. And now the fight to make was him and Duplessis. So it just had to make sense. So it's yeah. like, I, you can't knock Strickland back down. He's already done that. Let's let's not forget, you know, after he got beat by Alex Pereira, he fought the dude in the apex, I can't even remember his name, where he battered him. And yeah. then he battered someone else again in the first two rounds. Then he got the fight with, Strick, with Adesanya. I think he's proved that he does belong there. It's just took a long time for people to notice. And it took mm. sheer luck that he ended up fighting Adesanya because, you know, he showed the world what he's capable of. Yeah, definitely. And he it, it, it was lucky in the sense that Duplessis wasn't ready. Then Strickland got that shot and everybody kind of wrote him off. Didn't they? No one thought Strickland was going to run through easy the way he did. I think everyone completely wrote him off and yet he proved us all wrong. But I'm just not sure that he is that championship level fighter. I don't think he really is. I think... With Strickland, I don't think he's this next big superstar or anything like that. 
but I think he's going to be in that very similar sort of vein as like um, Nate Diaz, you know, that kind of like, he's a he's a fan favourite for a lot of people, but not much more than that. And I think due to Strickland being so active, I don't think we're going to get him on, you know, three more pay-per-views this year. I think we might get him on one or two and then a fight night. So I think we could still see him back at the apex just because he's so keen on fighting as often as possible. Though maybe he'll take a bit of a break now after such a such a difficult fight. Um, but, you know, of course, we can't obviously not talk about the new champion, Drikus Duplessis. What do you expect for Duplessis and his sort of reign as the champion? I'm really not sure. Duplessis is a strange one because... You know what I think? You know, obviously, it, it took him three rounds to get a decision over Darren Till. Then he beat an age Derek Brunson. And then I swear by this, you know, he got lucky with Robert Whitaker. If they ran that back, that fight back 99 times, Whitaker would beat him by decision every time. And mm -hmm. then he ended up getting the, the victory over Strickland. So you think, well, with Strickland being used to the apex, I don't want to call it a lower level at all because it's not, but you know what I mean? Like an apex fighter. And now Duplessis just beat him on the grand stage. You think, but can he hang with Adesanya? That kind of thing. Yeah. I, I don't know what to expect from his reign. I think it'll become clear when we find out who his next opponent is. I think yeah, we it... probably know who it might be, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's been strong hints towards that with certain words being thrown around the octagon last wow. year after he knocked Rob Whitaker out. But I was too <laughs> teary-eyed to actually watch that. <laughs> but that's the thing isn't it I think the trouble is with someone like Izzy as as the dominant champion as he was and that fantastic rival Ruth Pereira it almost feels like not that the division's on hold or anything but it, it almost feels like we've just got a champion in waiting you know rubber champions it doesn't like when Strickland got it I just thought well He's going to be champion, but for not for long. With Duplessis, I kind of think the same thing as well. It feels like, right, you have your one defense, you lose, let's move on. Who's the next big guy? Kind of similar to light heavyweight. You know, it's like you've lost that big dominant champion in John Jones, and now the whole division's kind of floundering. So we need someone to step back up. And, you know, straight after this fight, Duplessis called for a match with Israel Adesanya at UFC 300. Do you think that's kind of the killer main event that UFC 300 needs? Well, as a side note, Dwayne, I don't actually think it needs a main event at the moment, but obviously they are going to add to it. We'll see how Duplessis is once he's licked his wounds and things, you know, but mm. them wounds are a lot easier to lick when you've got a big shiny belt next to you <laughs> that you've just won. I think Adesanya versus Duplessis would sell and it would be a great way to cap off 300 rather than mm. a certain welterweight title fight that inevitably it's going to give it going to be, isn't it? Let's face it. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it probably will be, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, with Izzy, it, it, it's tricky because, uh, you know, I think that's a fun, fun fight to make, you know, Duplessis and Izzy, you know, even though small history, they've got a little bit of history, that bit of rivalry is there. And I think it'd be really, really fun to see them fight. And I think, that could just be the perfect sort of cherry on the top of the cake for 300. Um, but, Mike, do you think that Israel Alessania even deserves a title shot, especially after his last performance? Well, you've got... I've got two minds about this one because you think, well, one, how, you know, how dominant Israel was. He pretty cleaned out the division. He was on a second lap mm. of the entire division. He had that rivalry with uh, Alex, but then after that, he was still clearing up. But then at the same time, you go, well, how long is that valid for? How long is the the warranty, the the, the guarantee on that on that title reign? Is he, can he just come back at any time and just get a title shot? No. The same as what I thought with, uh, say, Connor. You can't just leave and then come back and get a title shot whenever you want. You've got to be able to prove that you're there. If fair's fair... Izzy should have to do one more fight before he gets a title shot, surely. He hasn't dropped that much that he's fighting some number 12 ranked guy. He's, he's got to fight one of the top, but the thing is, he's beat them all already. So it's got to be another rematch for Adesanya. Yeah, that's the big problem. Isn't it? And of course, it's fair. But like we've said many times before, the UFC doesn't book fairly. They book what's best for business. And they love a former champion, don't they? Like, look at Jose Aldo. You know, he lost and then got a title shot against Piotr Jan. You know, it, it, that's unfortunate just how the way the UFC works. They they want to push their former champions because they're big names as well. And that's the thing. Israel Adesanya, whether you like him or not, has huge name value. 
Um, and that's what's going to push this forward. And I think we will likely see Duplessis versus Israel this year. I can't see him fighting anyone else, but maybe they'll change that up. But we also have Hamzat Chamayev chomping at the bit um, to fight at UFC 300. He tweeted out, apparently. And Dana did say that the winner of Usman versus Hamzat will fight for the title. Do you think Hamzat Chamayev should be in the mix and should be getting that title shot next? He did, didn't he? I forgot all about that, actually. Yeah. Well, that that's the strange thing as well, because isn't Hamza or wasn't he very ill very recently? So, I mean, we can maybe see about that. I mean, I don't know. He seems to have the, like, weaker immune system than Freddie Mercury's last days. Nowadays, does Hamza compared to the other year as well. But it seems as if, yeah, it was a late notice fight because he was meant to fight Costa, but we all know what Costa is, a dirty pull-out merchant. But then he beat a welterweight to get the middleweight number one contendership. I forgot yeah. all about that actually. That Dana did promise that, so maybe that that's that's actually something that could be well presented there. Hamza versus Duplessis. I mean, mm. on paper, I'd have never ever put them names together. You know, six months ago, no one would have. No, uh, definitely just, not. But it's, that's the thing; it's so quick. The turnover is so fast for like UFC fighters getting a title shot, losing the title, and then rivals in the drops. That it's just it moves so quick, and everyone's mm. so quick to forget what we did have or what was in front of us. But now the tides have changed. Definitely. And I think because the UFC put on these huge pay-per-views every single month, that's going to happen, isn't it? That's why it's so quick based because you need to create these new rivalries as fast as possible. And with Hamzat Chamayev, I don't think we're going to see him in the title picture anytime soon. Um, I think the big problem is, one, he's not ranked in that division. Well, he is. I think he's ranked ninth. Ranked ninth should not be fighting for the title. And, He's always sick. <laughs> you know, this is the second time he's been sick. And he's always got visa issues, apparently. Like, he's always struggling to fight in America. I do not think you can have a champion who cannot fight in the USA because they're always doing fights there. If he gets the gold, what? We're going to have to wait for another year when he gets sick again or when he's got visa problems? I don't want to see that. I want to see an active champion. And Hamzat has not proved himself to be active enough yet for me for him to get in that title shot. Um, so while we're on the topic of USC 300, if it's not sort of Duplessis and versus Izzy, or it's not Hamzat versus Duplessis, who else do you think should be a good main event for 300? Oh, Bilal Mohammed, 100%. I think that guy could sell out an arena. He, it's just ridiculous. And it'd be like live aid. Everyone clapping in unison. No, I'm of course joking. I'd hate to see that fight. I, that might be one of the only times where if UFC 300 has Bilal Mohammed versus Leon Edwards as the main event, from the bangers that we've had up until that main event, I might actually turn off. That would be the first time that I've ever done that. That's the big problem, isn't it? And of course, you know, there's all these big expectations for UFC 300. And it is a huge card right now. I think there's five former champions on there. There's the BMF belt. There's my favorite fighter of all time. Jang Wei Lee's on there. It, I think this is an exciting card and I genuinely can't wait. But if you put Bilal versus Leon on, that just leaves such a bitter taste, doesn't it? Just such an excellent pay-per-view. You know, it's a fight that I wouldn't mind seeing. But not 300. We need something bigger, don't we? But just, I'm just not sure who that's going to be. But, you know, going back quickly to the title and Duplessis, there is also the winner of Whitaker versus Costa, if that fight ever happens. Do you think the winner of that fight should fight for the title? I'd, I'd probably say so, yeah, if it's Whitaker. Costa don't deserve it. <laughs> you know, that's not just favouritism because I like Rob. I'm just saying Costa hasn't done anything to deserve it. As you know, his last win with Luke Rockhold, that was his last fight. When was that? 2022 sort of thing? It was a while ago. Yeah, he beat a knackered aged Rockhold. And then since then, you know, a couple of fights that have been announced, but he's pulled out all the time. Injury granted, but you think, what the hell's this guy made of? I know it looks like he's made out of steel, but what is it? Polystyrene? He's just, is he constantly pulling out, isn't he? So you can't put all your eggs into one basket. I won't believe that Paolo Costa is fighting Rob Whitaker until they're in the, the cage. Because, yeah. you know, prior to that, Costa, I don't know, he's probably just drinking a shitload of wine or something. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tricky, isn't it? Because I, I do like Costa. I think he's really fun. I think he puts on fun fights. He's an entertaining guy, but he doesn't fight. 
You know, if you're not fighting, it's hard to stay interested. And if he beats Whitaker, no, he doesn't deserve a title shot. I don't think you can beat someone coming off a loss and you're inactive yourself and deserve a title shot. But I'm not even sure if Whitaker would get the title shot because, you know, especially after, you know, unfortunately, Mike, a horrible performance against Duplessis, should he be able to move up into a title shot against a guy, you know, he got finished by, you know, quite handedly as well, you know? That's that's the thing, isn't it? Of what we're going back to, what makes sense, what's fair, what's best for business. I think a good one that could happen is Whitaker versus Strickland, though. That could mm. be a really fun fight to make. And it's one that they've almost, you know, they've been on the same path at middleweight, but they, they just haven't crossed paths. And I think that would be an excellent fight to make. That uh, that could probably cement the okay, the winner of this should probably earn a title shot now, but just because of the levels that they've been at, um, you know, consistency. Whitaker, I know he's a bit of a decision machine, but he's consistent with it. And I'm not having it, Dwayne. He just got caught off guard. He sneezed <laughs> at the time when Duplessis threw that big right hand. <laughs> you know, anyone, anyone would have got Brock Lesnar would have gone down with that. Not having <laughs> it, boy, Rob. Well, I, I think Whitaker versus Strickland would be a fun, fun fight. It really would. But I do worry for Whitaker, actually. I think as skilled as he is, I think he really struggles with these long rangey jabs. And especially when Strickland has such a big, powerful jab, I think, unfortunately, he might catch Whitaker coming in and out. And, you know, as great as Whitaker is, his chin's not quite up to scratch for what it needs to be, does it, at that high level. And it's it could seem the end for him and that'd be awful wouldn't it seeing him get finished be, to an let's, apex let's, not even, let's not even think about that it's like watching Bambi's mum get shot the, um, I think with Strickland though you make such a good point there Sean Strickland's approach to a fight you watch it back you even listen to the commentators it's such a basic it's a one two teeps and a few leg kicks there's nothing fancy or anything but it works it yeah. got him to the title you know it got him a title shot it also won him the title against the one of the greatest middleweights ever. It just works for him. Back to basics. and It, it just mm. paid off. So a lot of people don't give Sean Strickland credit where credit is due. And they say that he's quite a basic fighter. But why would you feel the need to add to that? Why would you want to do mm. all the, anything fancy if what you're doing is paying off? Well, unfortunately, it didn't pay for him last night because he got battered by Duplessis. <laughs> But overall, though, I think UFC 297 was quite a lackluster card and a little bit disappointing to start the year. But hopefully that just means we're going to just build up on that and we're going to get better pay-per-views all across this year. And I cannot wait. And I'm excited to see where this division goes and what's next for Sean Strickland and Driscus Duplessis. Thank you everyone for watching. If you can like, comment and subscribe, it really does help us out.